Hello and welcome back to AB in Focus. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Kingsley Wheaton, the CMO of BAT. Kingsley, thank you for joining me and welcome to the show. Thank you, Matthew. Lovely to be here. So to start with, open question, we're sat here in Dubai. Uh, what brings you here to the city and to the country? Sure. Well, I mean, the, the Middle East, this part of the world, is a, a really important part of our business. Uh, I'm actually here with some other members of the management team uh, reviewing the business performance, uh, not just of this part of the world, but also the, the, the broader uh, Asia region, uh, and uh, working with, with the local management team on, on reviewing the business. So it's been great being here for about three or four days doing that. And you've, I understand you've released a new strategy. Does that incorporate Middle Eastern operations as well? How does that look different to what you had previously? Yeah, ab absolutely. We launched our Evolve strategy in uh, March of 2020. Uh, the centerpiece of that is our purpose, which is uh, trying to create a better tomorrow. And that's about uh, reducing the harm impact uh, of our portfolio, of our combustible business, uh, and switching consumers to reduced harm products through tobacco harm reduction. And the Middle East is, you know, is a really, really important part of that uh, because of its uh, progressive view on regulation, because of the consumer base, and also because in so many ways it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it, it's the centre of this part of, of the region and in many ways the centre of the world. So it's really important uh, that we get it right in the Middle East. I think it's important that we address this issue around tobacco harm reduction, obviously an important topic. <coughs> But as you mentioned, part of your portfolio is combustibles and is tobacco. You, you as a firm, produce tobacco. How can you, on one hand, argue for tobacco harm reduction when surely the best kind of tobacco harm reduction would be to stop selling tobacco? Sure. I, I mean, look, it's, it's a question I get asked a lot. And I think, you know, there's numerous ways of coming at that. I think the first thing is to think about the supply side and the demand side of this, of this issue. So if we simply switched off what we sell, uh, that would be uh, a supply side solution, but it wouldn't change the demand patterns of consumers. So it would simply, uh, those cigarettes would be provided by somebody else. And in fact, we had a live test case of that in South Africa uh, in 2020 through COVID when uh, the South African government suspended cigarette sales for four and a half months. Uh, consumer offtake barely dropped and the market was just filled uh, by illicit trade and by the black market. Um, but I think there's more reasons than that. So uh, beyond the unintended consequences, uh, it's also important that we take the value streams, the profit streams, the cash streams from our combustible business and use that to accelerate our non-combustible next generation portfolio. So it's, you know, it, 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 it's part of the solution of transforming the business in a, uh, a measured thought through way and trying to accelerate that transformation, if you put it simply, from things that burn and cause the harm to things that don't. So paint me a picture, if you will, about what that blueprint that you're speaking about looks like when you place it here in the Middle Eastern region. How does that apply to this area of the world? Sure, well, we have uh, three, three broad categories in tobacco harm reduction. What, one of them is vapor, uh, and we have our brand Views, which is the largest uh, legitimate vapor brand in the Middle East. We have our tobacco heating product, which is Glow, uh, which is not currently that prevalent in this part of the world, largely due to uh, regulatory reasons. Uh, and then we have a modern oral product uh, called Velo. So if you think of our business globally, if you went back not that many years ago, none of our revenue would be in these reduced harm, non-combustible products. We reported, based on our 21 results, that 12% of our revenues are now in non-combustible products. So that shift is happening. Uh, and if you focus in on some key markets, UK, Sweden, Japan would be examples. Over 40% of our revenue is now in those products. And we want to uh, do that here as well in these markets. Uh, we launched Vapor for the first time in the region in 2016. Uh, we have uh, Vapor businesses launched in Bahrain and Kuwait and Saudi Arabia and UAE in 2020. Uh, and we really want to work with government and policymakers to ensure that the, uh, the regulatory pathway, if you like, is addressed to allow us to make these products, this multi-category portfolio, available to smokers who want to make the switch. Is this part of a broad-based approach from BAT to try and reduce its health impact? I mean, if we're being frank here, tobacco is obviously is quite insidious when you're talking about as a combustible. So is, is this something long-term that we're going to be looking at? You're saying 12% now, when are we looking at that being, you know, more like 90%. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, it, it, it's, uh, it's absolutely the direction of travel. And I think we want to accelerate that transformation. 
Uh, as I said, the strategy is all about this creation of a better tomorrow. I, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk in the world about ESG and sustainability. I, I, I sort of say it's, it's not where you start from. That's, that's, that's what, you, what you start with. It's, it's where you're trying to get to. And we have big ambitions. Uh, we want to have five billion pounds of new category revenue by uh, 2025. Uh, we want to have 50 million uh, users of these products uh, by 2030. Um, so, you know, there's a long way ahead. There's 1.1 billion smokers worldwide. There's about 100 million users of these products. So there's plenty of sort of runway or headroom, if you like, to continue that transformation. Already 15% of uh, consumers in the region, in the Middle East region, are already using, uh, you know, reduced harm nicotine products. 37% of them are open to uh, try them. So I think we have a very very fertile ground in terms of consumer base for the Middle East to play its part in that BAT transformation story. So as part of that transformation, where are the biggest challenges? Where, where, where are the biggest difficulties that you're going to be facing? It's a great question. And I think, you know, if I can tackle them sort of internally and externally. Internally, I think the biggest challenge is to make products that are truly satisfying. Um, the cigarette's been around a long time. Um, to create the same level of satisfaction or get as proximate as you can with these different products uh, is, is the work of R&D and our innovation. And if you went back to 16, I think it was, or 15, when we launched our first vapor product, uh, the progress is, is unbelievable. Um, and I think that progress will only accelerate. So the, the closer we can make the satisfaction, I think the more people will, will, will walk across what I call the compromise bridge to actually use them because it will be close enough and they'll understand the trade-offs. Uh, so that's a challenge, being able to create fantastic products. Then, of course, we have to attach them to brands because brands are hugely important in this space. And in, in Views and Glow, we have now $2 billion brands worldwide and they're starting to get big, scalable, global, uh, and they provide a great signpost to consumers. So that's, that's another challenge is brand building. And I think the third one is the external environment, is the regulatory environment. And that's where it's, it's really important for us that you know, we work together with all the stakeholders in this debate uh, based on a multi-stakeholder approach to fry, uh, frame uh, the right regulatory approach, the right excise approach that creates an environment where these products can flourish because it's about you know, uh, that inflection curve dipping more sharply down. That's, that's the aim of tobacco harm reduction. And to do that, we need to have marketplaces which are open and receptive uh, to those products. As a business though, we can talk about reducing the harm of tobacco and talk about how these products may well be better for smokers than smoking a normal cigarette. Mm -hmm. But that being said, how do we, what do we talk about new customers? As a business, surely you want to keep on growing revenue, right? Wouldn't that mean attracting new business, which is antithetical to tobacco harm reduction? Sure, well, you know, at, at the moment, 95% of our users of non-combustible products worldwide have switched from smoking. Um, and, you know, we want to encourage smokers who would otherwise have continued to smoke to make the switch. But I suppose the question philosophically is what's, what's the alternative? Um, you know, the, the old view of tobacco control policy was about fundamentally quit or die. Um, I saw a chart not that long ago where the WHO was forecasting the same number of smokers worldwide in 2050 as there are today. That would suggest that quit or die as a tobacco control policy is, is not working, is not being effective. Um, and therefore, I think, you know, you have to go somewhere else, which in our view is tobacco harm reduction. There's a lot of available external science. Um, the UK is pro-tobacco harm reduction. The USA, by dint of the FDA, uh, good uh, good, good stuff coming out of France, out of Canada, who are supportive of vapor, and even New Zealand. Um, so gradually, what you see around the world is, is governments and policymakers taking this sort of philosophical uh, switch, if you like, to tobacco harm reduction more and more seriously. And, and that's something that we certainly want to work with uh, with local governments here on as well. But how do you stop new people from starting uh, a tobacco addiction that they didn't have beforehand? Well, you know. We're here to switch consumers who are smoking. There's 1.1 billion smokers worldwide and making that switch. I think we are absolutely intent on responsible marketing. You know, these products should be available to adults only. Um, that's a responsibility for us when we go through uh, business to consumer channels through e-commerce. But I think it's also the responsibility of retailers who we work with 
key account partners to make sure these products are not sold to people who are not adults and not smokers. And it's really about making sure that we have what I call the right sort of marketing principles in place that we're encouraging you know, consumers who smoke, who would otherwise have continued to smoke, to make the switch. Interesting. So bringing the conversation back to the Middle East here as well, how would you describe this region of uh, how important is it to BAT's portfolio? Where does this region sit as part of BAT's business? Well, the, the Middle East region is you know, hugely important. I actually, um, I actually started my career here in the, in the 90s. So for me, it's, uh, it's something of a, a, a personal endeavor um, as well. Um, we took the decision to put our Middle East headquarters in Saudi Arabia in 2019. That kicked off in 2020. We have 450 people across the region. 360 of those are in Saudi. Uh, and it's a hugely important uh, part of the world. I mean, we, we, we break our world into numerous geographies, you can imagine, from North America through Europe, Asia, and, and, and the Middle East is a, a really important part of that transformation story. And I think we have to get it right here. I, I also think that uh, the Middle East becomes over time more and more of a hub, uh, more and more people passing through, whether that be for work or for vacations or for travel. Uh, and I also see it from a sort of an external point of view is that it's a, it's a showcase for the world. So I think it's very important uh, that we get it right in the Middle East. I think it's also synonymous with, you know, in Saudi Arabia, especially with the 2030 vision. You know, and it's interesting, we have our 2030 targets. Saudi Arabia has its 2030 targets. And, and I see those working in parallel because it's about becoming, it's about progression uh, and it's about a future and it's about, you know, transformation in our case of our business. I think there's an interesting question to put out there as well. You've mentioned a lot so far when we were talking earlier about the importance of speaking with authorities and about getting the regulation right. So you obviously as a firm have a lot of experience in dealing with regulatory authorities around the world. How would you describe working with authorities in the Middle East? Mm. Uh, they have big agendas, big targets like sure. Vision 2030 and here in the UAE as well. There's huge objectives coming up sure. and a lot of top-down leadership. How would you describe that experience? Uh, look, you know, I talk with the local team about that. I've met um, a lot of our regulatory team um, and, and they speak uh, very, very positively about it. I think, you know, it's, it's similar to regulators and policymakers worldwide, and that is that they want facts. You know, they, they want the science. They want to understand that actually tobacco harm reduction is the right thing to do, and that's not based on hearsay or storytelling on our behalf. It's backed with world-class internal and external science. And I think once that dialogue starts constructively, then I think you know, everybody starts to see the merit of it. So it's been, it's been a really positive journey for us, but I think we've got further to go, obviously. As you pointed out earlier, tobacco harm reduction is already a policy at play in some countries, the mm. UK, I think you mentioned, in the US as well. Why is it only now that you've decided to bring that policy to the Middle Eastern region? Sure. Well, you know, I mean, we've actually, as I said, we launched our first vapor product in 2016. Funnily enough, I was running Next Generation products at the time. And Bahrain and Q8 were, I think, one of the first markets we launched in. So I would, I would dispute the assertion in the question. Um, looking at it a bit more long term, I mean, the, the idea of creating a safer cigarette is not, is not a new idea. It's not an, an idea of the last decade. I've seen, you know, IP, which goes back even to the 50s or the 60s, of people looking for reduced harm alternatives. Um, in fact, uh, our US subsidiary Reynolds launched the first ever tobacco heating product in 1988. Um, it wasn't very good, but you know it was launched and it was an attempt. I think what's happened more recently is that technology and innovation has caught up with the with the challenge, if you like. So particularly areas like battery technology, uh, miniaturization, electronics allows us to create you know vaping devices of all sorts that are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and therefore they play their part in consumer satisfaction. So in some ways, if if, if I think about BAT's journey, it's 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 actually a, a, not just a transformation shift of portfolio, it's almost from tobacco to technology. You know, we're doing things today that certainly when I started 25 years ago, I would, I would never have dreamt of. And you mentioned brands earlier as well, right, which I assume is probably something that's near and dear to your yes, heart as yes, the indeed. chief marketing officer. Yes. What would you say is the evolution of the brand presence for BAT in the Middle East over the next five years or sure. so? Yeah. Well, look, you know, we've had, we've had some success. As I said, Views is now, you know, the largest uh, legitimate vaping brand in, in the Middle East cluster. We, we, we actually have some, uh, we, you may know that we partner with, with McLaren, which is interesting because the, 
you know, the, this part of the world has has probably the highest sort of prevalence of, of Formula One. We did a we did a massive bit of activity at Abu Dhabi last year with a campaign that I was very proud of called Views Driven by Change. Uh, and that brought together a, uh, a lady, uh, Egyptian, if I remember rightly, artist who created a piece of artwork. Um, it was the first time a piece of artwork had ever run on a Formula One car in its life. Happened in Abu Dhabi created an enormous impact in terms of in social media uh, and impressions and is now actually lined up for some of the biggest marketing awards in the world. So we'll be building views in the Middle East region. Over time, we'll be building Glow in the Middle East region. And because BAT strategy is multi-category, we'll be building all three brands. And, and I think some of, the, uh, some of the most innovative, exciting, energetic marketing that I've seen of these products is happening, you know, right here in the Middle East. And, and, and that's great to see. Excellent. Well, uh, unless you have anything further to add, I think we've covered everything there. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. Thank you, Matthew. It's really lovely to meet you. Thank you.